Professor Dave and Chegg here. We just learned about the different nuclear reactions that nuclides can undergo, which allows us to understand what radioactivity and radiation are. Now let's learn about the different rates at which various radioactive nuclei will decay, based on the precise activity of an isotope. What's interesting about radioactive decay is that there is no precise way to determine when an individual nuclide will decay. Instead, we can only look at a macroscopic sample and measure how many decay events occur per unit time out of the entire sample. This is a very reliable value, but for each individual nuclide, we can only discuss probabilities. But again, we can still discuss a rate of decay for a sample, which is negative delta n over delta t, or the number of nuclide disintegrations per unit time. This value is negative because the number of nuclides is decreasing as decay continues to occur. We can set this equal to the number of nuclides present times a proportionality constant, k. We can then apply the integrated first order rate law, just like we did in our study of kinetics, and we get this the natural log of n over n naught equals negative kt, where n is the remaining number of radioactive nuclides, while n naught is the initial number prior to the initiation of decay. We can also describe the rate of decay in terms of half-lives, or the amount of time that must elapse for a sample of radioactive nuclei to be reduced to half the original amount. It will be the case that a half-life will be equal to the natural log of 2 over k, or 0 0.693 over k. So if we know the rate constant, we can get the half-life, or if we know the half-life, we can get the rate constant. Let's try an example. The rate constant for the decay of technetium 99m is 0 0.116 per hour. What is the half-life? Well, let's plug this in for k in the half-life equation, and we get 5.98 hours. This means that every 5.98 hours, there will be half as many radioactive nuclides as there were one half-life prior. This is an important point that must be understood. It is not the case that after one half-life, half the original sample is present, and then after another half-life, all of it is gone. Half of what remains will decay over every half-life. So after two half-lives, there will be a quarter of the original sample. After three, there will be one-eighth, then one-sixteenth, and so forth. With fewer nuclides, the probability of decay decreases. Let's try one more problem. The half-life of molybdenum-99 is 66 hours. How much of a one milligram sample is left after 330 hours? Well, how many half-lives does 330 hours represent? If we divide 330 by 66, we see that this is five half-lives. So all we have to do is cut the original sample in half five times. That will leave us with 0.031 milligrams remaining. So we now know a bit about the kinetics of nuclear decay in the context of half-lives, which is an important concept with many practical applications. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.